Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Where do I go when there's nobody there to talk to? Who do I turn to? Yes, when there's nobody who wants to listen, and who do I lean on? Amen. Amen. You don't know about them. 
And they don't know about you. But they have not bowed the knee under Baal. Amen? Amen. Amen. The multitude, amen, might make you want to swap up. In the world, they call it jumping the bandwagon. That means going from one side to, that you feel like it's losing and jumping to the side that looks like it's winning. Going from the side that ain't hardly nobody on, because I'm going to tell you something. If you got many people on that road, you really don't too much want to travel that road. I remember the man that God told me, amen, especially, amen, you're a woman. Amen. He said, don't ride on the road where don't nobody hardly go. You get on that road where it's a bunch of vehicles. So if anything ever happens, and we don't look for it, but it'll be easy to find you because you're on that main road. Right. Yes. Yes. Amen? Yes. So when you're on that narrow way, that way that the Bible said, few there be that travel there on. Not many people are going to go that way. They may not agree with that way because that way is a little too narrow. You can't get much in that road. In this walk of ours in Christ, we try to bring too much in with God. And God, amen, is just, he said, leave all that excess stuff out there. But that's how you win souls. That's what the world says. God says, no, you win souls by telling the truth. Amen. And the truth is what's going to make them free. Amen. amen. Not the way that makes them feel good in the flesh. Amen. But the way that's going to deliver them from the grips of Satan. Jesus came in a time of persecution. He came in a time when, when the church was up under attack. When people were afraid to even mention that they had, amen, a, a faith of Jesus. That they trusted in God and they believed in the Lord. They were afraid to even mention his name because it meant death. Many people have been martyred. Saints have been blamed for many things. Amen. That they were not guilty of. False accused. Misused and abused. Jesus stepped up in that time. He stepped up in a time of tyrants. He stepped in in a time, amen, when the world, amen, would kill him just to soon look at him. He had to survive. He had to make it to 30 years so that he could preach openly and people could be saved. He can give hope where there was no hope. Amen. He came in, we know from the reading of the scriptures, most definitely every Sabbath day he came up under attack. I don't believe there was a Sabbath that Jesus even awakened without knowing that he was going to come up under some type of attack that day. But he always came out on time. Yeah. He always had a word for the enemy. The Bible said he was gifted and he was able to put the silence, the mouths of the scoffers and the mockers. When they put him to the test and they tried to trip him up in his words and trip him up with the law, they couldn't do it. Amen? Amen. But he was able to put them to silence, bring them to an open shame. Amen? Amen? They were so afraid of him. Who was this man coming up in a time? And first of all, the fact that he didn't fear made them uneasy. Amen? He wasn't shaking in his shoes and he spoke with boldness. Amen? And he came. And for those that were getting reverence and people were calling him master and lord and bowing to them, he would rebuke them and call them hypocrites. He didn't call them master or lord. Amen. He didn't call them rabbi. He called them hypocrites. Amen. Whited sepulchers. Oh, and the list goes on. Amen. Because of that demon of rebellion that was upon them. Because they weren't willing to release that that caused them to get glory. And here comes somebody that was taking their glory away. And they didn't like it. Amen. How did he take the glory from them? Because he loved and they didn't. He gave and they took. Amen. How many people know everybody loves a giver? Amen. The song says everybody loves a winner. But everybody loves a giver. Ask the prodigal son. But when you get what you have to ask or you have to take, people don't care much for you then. Amen? Amen. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, they, they promoted fear upon the people to get them to honor them as they wanted to. They would um, advertise themselves, if you will say, with the wife, the lactories, and the porters on their clothing. And Jesus came. He wasn't trying to be seen of men. 
Bible said he came and he was humble. He came, amen, in a way that they weren't expecting, very necessary. It was necessary that he was not born in a castle. It was necessary that he was not born in privilege because the devil would have destroyed him before he could bring the word and cause souls to be saved. He had to make it to bring forth the word of God to save us, amen, so that he could give his life for us. So he walked in the presence of the enemy and the enemy was always wondering, is he the one? Is this the one that's going to take the souls out of my hand? Is this the one that's going to take the keys to death from me? Is he the one? And they wondered. Amen? Amen. Satan had his vessels. Herod was one of them. Amen? He sought to destroy the Savior. The only problem was he didn't know who he was. He didn't know surely he wouldn't be born in a stable. Amen? Amen. And I remember the word of God said this. When Jesus comes, we're dealing with the last days. He said men would be marrying and giving in marriage. They'd be going about their regular day, doing what they normally do when the Lord returns. He said, but blessed is that man and when he returns, he'll find you on his will. Amen? amen? The question is, amen, we know that the day is upon us. Amen? We know we have seen the scriptures being fulfilled. The Bible speaks of wars and rumors of wars. If you'll turn to the book of Matthew 24. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew 24. God is good. And all the time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 1 says, And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. And all the time. There will not be left one stone upon another. Amen. That shall not be thrown down. Amen. Verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Be warned. Don't let the enemy deceive you. For many, and that's where we're at right now, shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Well, we're already there. Mm -hmm. Notice what he said. See that you be not troubled. For all these things must, it is a must that it come to pass. But the end is not yet. Verse 7 says, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Kingdom, forgive me. And there shall be famines and pestilences and, and earthquakes in diverse places. Amen? These are the things that's already happening now. These are the things that's letting us know we're in the last days. And he said this, verse 8, all of these are the beginning of sorrows. Can you feel it? People are sorrowing all over the world. People are contemplating things. They're thinking things over. Their minds are in places that normally they should not be. Amen? Amen. People are releasing their faith. They're letting go of their faith. Their focus is, amen, being taken off of God and it's being placed on every negative testimony that it is. And people are questioning their walk with God. They're questioning their God. Amen? Yeah. These are the beginning of sorrows. Notice we said it's just the beginning. Amen? Amen? Verse 9. Then shall they deliver you up. Who? To 
to be afflicted. That's something flesh doesn't want to do, but this is what's going to happen. We come up under attack for the name of Jesus. Amen. They shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. Go in that time of tea when you're sorrowing, you'll do things, desperate things. And ye shall be hated, not of some, ye who the believers, the Jesus lovers. Amen. Amen. Ye shall be hated of all. Amen. Nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended. Now they're going to be offended with who? God. Why are you letting all this happen? Why did he let it happen to his son? Amen. Why did he let his son get beat? And then had the nerve. The Bible said in Isaiah. It pleased the Lord to do it. He was happy to do it. Why? Because when his son took our place. We had hope. When he took our place. That place of eternal damnation. Would no longer be our testimony. It would no longer be our future. Because his son. Took our place. It pleased him. Amen. Because you see his word could not be a lie. His word was going to be fulfilled. His promise to us is if you disobey me, death. Amen. Death had to come. We couldn't deliver ourselves. We had all sinned. We were born in sin. We were captives of Satan. Jesus came sin free. Amen? Amen. And he was that scapegoat that took everything that we deserved upon himself and carried it to hell. Stayed there for a few days. Preached salvation to those that were there. They received, I believe they received the gift of the Holy Ghost in hell. That's what I believe. I believe they were, they got up through the spirit. Amen? Amen. This is what the word of God says. Amen. You shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Verse 10. And then, at that time, shall many be offended. And shall they're going to betray one another. And shall hate one another. Amen. And many false prophets shall rise about Job. And shall deceive many. When you see the many, if you're not rooted and grounded on Jesus, you'll follow the many. He said they're going to deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Amen. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Amen. I'm going to tell you, enduring takes a whole lot. Enduring means you got to know the God that you serve. You have to know, amen, and believe that what he said in Jeremiah, amen, was it 26, 29, and 11? I know the plans and the thoughts that I think towards you. Amen. amen. Thoughts to give you of good and not of evil. Not of evil. The devil's thoughts are evil. God's are not. To give you an expected end. Amen. That's God's thoughts. But we are bombarded with everybody trying to think for God. Try to assume they know God like that. And you're going to, amen, the wrath is going to fall on you. We all get chastened. Amen. God is not in the business of rejecting us. He's in the business of restoring us and healing us. Amen. Raising us up so we can stand against the works of the enemy. Amen. Amen. He said... Amen. Many false prophets, verse 11, shall arise, shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. Amen. Amen. 
That's a must. It, and that's what's going on now. The word is going forth into all the world. Missionaries, amen, are going forth with the word and not only trying to help in the natural, but taking them and helping them to understand the love of God. Yeah. Then shall the end come. So we know that we're in the end because scripture tells us that. Amen. When ye therefore, notice what it says, shall see the abomination that maketh desolate or of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet. I want you to stand where? In the holy place. Amen. In the holy place, in a place where you're not transgressing against God and his word. Amen. When you're not walking contrary to the word. Amen. Amen. Stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Verse 16, then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Yes. Let him which is on the housetop, you're in the place where God, this ain't the time to backslide. Oh, yeah. This ain't the time to pick up some spirit that doesn't belong to you. Oh, yeah. Amen. When God make you free, he said you're free indeed. Yeah. Satan comes to bring us back into captivity. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He said this, let them which is on the housetop, you in that place in the spirit and you better believe you fought to get there. Satan tried to help us to stop you and head up your way everywhere you turn. He tried to stop you. You fought your way through some things to get here. Don't go back. Don't look back. Because it came with a price. It came with loss. It came with pains. We don't go back. But we press forward. Yeah. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Don't let none of the old men rise back up. Mm. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. The Bible said we have need of meat. Amen. Mm -hmm. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. But then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And this is what I've been telling the church. And I ministered the last time I spoke. Amen. We're not looking. And I need you to understand this, and I don't want you to misinterpret what I'm saying. We get up every morning. We go about our merry business. Amen. We know according to scripture we're in the last days. Amen. But what are we doing about it? Right. Amen. What changes are we making in our life? I'm not talking about trying to fix somebody else. You know, that's something we like to do, try to fix others. But we need to fix us. Amen. Amen. I said when Jesus came, he was born. What were they doing? They knew the prophecy. They knew that a virgin would bring forth a child. Who would be the savior of the world. Yes. Amen. He would come for the rise and fall of many. And yet. When Jesus came on the scene. They were still doing their regular things. Going about their own merry business. Still marrying and giving in marriage. Still partying. Tax time and all of that. And nobody was prepared. For Jesus. They were caught. Had Jesus brought us wrath that day. Everybody would have been in a mess. We know that we're in the last days. And we know that the scripture says, blessed is those that when he returns, he'll find doing his will. Not saying I'm going to do it tomorrow. Amen. I know I need to do this and I'm going to get ready. Amen. But I just need to get this out of the way first. It's like what we do when we, we do a fast. I want to get all this here food that I like and get it all out the way. And you know, and you know how it is. We do that. We, we try to get all that out of the way and we get ourselves in a, in a deeper fix. Amen. And the reality is when the day comes, you still got things you need to get out of the way. Amen? But God says he wants us ready every day. We get up. I know I can speak for myself. We get up and we get up as though, amen, we got this appointment. We got that to do. We got this. And we got a whole list of things we need to do. We basically almost get up running. Can I get anybody to say amen? Amen. We run it because our day is already set for us. Our day is already planned for us. But notice what he said. Pray that your flight is not. Amen. Glory to God. I'm going to read it right. Be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Amen. Because we got so much in the way. 
so much that we're doing. We don't want Jesus to come and find us undone. You don't have to worry about when Jesus is coming. I know people say, amen, you don't know when God is going to come. If we get in the spirit and we hear God, God lets us know when he's going to come. Amen. 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 How many remember reading in the book of Acts, I believe it was chapter 21, amen, when, when Paul, amen, was getting ready and he knew that it was about his time. And, and the prophet came and tore the bottom of his robe and said, the person who's robed this is, they're going to be in bonds and they're going to go through all this. And all the other disciples, they were crying and they were weeping. They were saying, Paul, no, don't do it. And Paul got offended. And he rebuked them. And he said, I want you to know something. Not only am I ready for that to be done, God has already revealed that to me. Amen. I'm just doing what I'm supposed to do. So when we do what we're supposed to do for Jesus, it doesn't make a difference about what's going to come upon us. Because we'll be ready. Amen? Every day we get ourselves ready through prayer and through the word. Amen? Fighting our way through all these spirits. See, there's a spirit of heaviness upon the world right now. And we, a lot of people don't even understand why they're going through what they're going through with. Why they have this frame of mind. You got people who are, who are perky people and they've lost their perk and they don't understand what's going on. Amen? It's these demons that's out here. Amen? And people are feeling it. They're feeling the oppression. They're feeling the rage. They're feeling, amen, this here that's boiling. Amen? It's coming to a head. It's like a rising. And everything is fusing and it's coming to a head. Amen? And something's getting ready to erupt. You know it. You can feel it. Why? Because we're in the last days. Our job, amen, is to denounce every work of Satan. Amen. Speak out against that thing. Put it in the atmosphere and let the devil know that we're not going to open ourselves up to these spirits that are all around us. But we fight. We fight this good fight of faith and we stand still. We stand in the holy place. I will not bow. Amen. We can't afford to bow or back up. We cannot afford to back away from God's word. Amen. Because God gave us a commandment, amen, to walk in his will and to keep his statute. And anytime we operate in anything other than what God said, we're not manifesting his character as we're supposed to. Amen. See, the world is searching for something. They're searching for God. They don't know God. They can't see in the spirit. Amen. And don't get me wrong. People see spirits, but they don't know what they see. But we're the ones when they see us, how we go through our trials, it gives them a little bit of, of a vision or an insight of what God is and who God is. Amen. Because if we say that we have the spirit of God and we walk in the presence of the Lord, we hear God. Amen. Then when God puts us through the test, when he tries us, it's important. We have to learn how to praise God for the trials. Yes. See, we'll cry. We'll feel bad. We'll get upset. Yeah. And God is saying, I'm trying to work something in you. Yeah. Allow me to put you through the test and purpose to pass it. Yeah. Because I have to break this down or you won't make it in the last days. We have to go through the test. Amen? Yeah. Your love has to be tested. And you've got to come through spotless. You've got to come through like Jesus said. Loving the enemy. Doing good to those who despitefully misuse you. Amen? Amen? Letting the world know what it is to love the unloving. Yes. Amen? The ones that get on what they say, your last nerve. You know, we've lost that a lot of times, so God must be restoring it. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> we've got to go through the test and we've got to pass it right. God is not just going to slide you through. You've got to pass the test. That's you and me too. We have to pass the test. We have to go through. We've got to pass the right. The Bible said that we may be the children of, of our father. He passed the test. God was pleased to bruise him because he knew he was going to pass the test. Jesus testified out of his own mouth and he let the devil know, I do always those things that please my father. Amen. I love the unloving. The unlovable. I love them. Yeah. Amen. He tolerated Judas and all the rest of them that were bickering like children. He went through that. 
He loved them. Amen. Amen. He was not an accuser of the brethren. That's Satan. Amen. See, sometimes we get the two mixed. Amen. Amen. Satan is not God. He will never be God. Satan is not good. Amen. Amen. There's nothing good about Satan. Amen. He wants to destroy. He wants to take what he's not able to. See, he doesn't have the power anymore to take your life. Amen. He can't kill you. But what he can do, amen, is to get you to walk in a mess. He can get you to back up from God. He can get you to surrender to his will. And he knows that's going to separate you from God. And the man of God said this, once you get separated from the flock, he can get you. Amen. amen. He can get you. He can get you to destroy yourself. Amen. And let go of your God. People of God, we're no better than Jesus is. We give a message to God every day. Lord, you do this to me, then I can't serve you. Amen. I will not. You know, when we get ready, we're stubborn. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take that. I'm not going to do that. When God is saying, but I told you to take it. And I told you to do it. Amen. And when we stand against what God says, we trespass against the commandment of God. Anything that's not love is a transgression of God's law. It's law is love. Amen. God is all about love. He dealt with David. Because David didn't have that. David was a good man. He was. He was a good king. But David was an imperfect king. Amen. And his people were affected. Because, amen, as, as, as a leader, amen, God places jewels in our care. For him, it was all of what? Israel and Judah. They were placed up under his care. Amen. A king or queen or anybody, maybe it's a, a CEO. Those workers that are up under him are placed in their care. So it's important how the boss man treats his, his people that work for him, his workers. It's important how he treats them. Amen. Because guess what? They're working for him. Amen. David had people that were dedicated to him. Amen. They did whatever he said. You imagine the love that they had for David. Amen. David said, Put Uriah on the front line. They might not agree with it. They might not have even liked it. But because of, he was their king. Amen. And they loved him. Amen. They dedicated their lives to him. They were willing to do exactly what he said. Yeah. And come back and say, Uriah is dead. Yeah. Amen. Amen. When he went to fussing about, why would y'all get on the front line? You knew not to go to the front line. You knew. And he said, Uriah is dead. And that was it. Amen. They were letting their king know we honored what you said. We did exactly what you said. But that's what God is saying to us. When you get through crying and bawling and fussing, amen, you get up and say, Lord, amen, I'm doing what you said. God, I got before you and I done cried this thing out. I'm going to get up loving. I'm going to get up treating people right. I'm going to get up, Lord, this demon want me not to forgive. Lord, I'm so upset I can fight the air. But I know it's not your will. So I won't surrender to this spirit. See, one thing about us that God knew about us. We have a, a, a gift. I want to use the word gift. We have a gift of resistance. Layman's terms, stubbornness. Amen, that sounds a little bit better. <laughs> if I'm not going to do it, I don't care what you say, I'm going to do it. God knew we had that. And this is what he told us. If you don't take that gift that you have, that stubborn spirit, and said, I refuse to walk with hatred. I ain't doing it. I refuse to be bitter. I'm not having it. The Bible told us that we resist the devil. But well, what are we resisting? The word 
to the flesh. And we tell that devil, I will not bow. I'm not surrendering to that spirit. It's not that you know happen. I've been in bondage too long. I'm so tired and drained from being mad all the time. You ever see people when you see them coming, you want to run the other direction? You know when they open their mouth, ain't nothing no good come out of it? Ain't nothing good coming out of it. You already, you can almost quote, they're going to tell you everything bad that happened. Amen? You wonder sometimes how in the world can people have something bad every day? And you say to yourself, oh, God damn, you have nothing good to say. You know, they kind of make you feel good because you're comparing yourself to them. Amen. You don't look so bad. Because they look a little bit worse than you and we all guilty. Amen. I felt good saying that we are all guilty. Amen. That's that spirit that Solomon had. When you focus on the negative, the good is there, you just don't see it. Amen. I told the church when I ministered to them, I said, God created us all good. But what message did you get? Amen. And I say this, and I say it constantly. Cosmetic surgery, plastic surgery, all that stuff is making megabucks. You might not even have a surgery. You ain't even got to have a surgery. But all the medications, Botox, I, I know I've heard that phrase, I don't know what it's for, but Botox and all them other things, this, the crepey race and all that, that 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 makes you take that body that God created that he said was good. Yes. You know, God said it was good. But we listen to what man said, amen, they got us when we were little and made us feel like we were imperfect. We had shortcomings. Is something wrong? When you looked in the mirror, your ears were too big, your nose was too wide, your eyes were too buck, and boy, you went to trying to work. Oh, I can fix all of that because man, amen, they got technology. And they, let me tell you, they, they can help that with my skin color. I don't like it. Well, you know, you can bleach yourself. And when that devil gets through with you, you're not you anymore. you somebody else or something else. And I tell you, when you get through changing you and looking like somebody or something else, somewhere in there, God still recognizes you. And he'll probably tell you, what have you done? Didn't I tell you that you were good? Why did you listen at them? Why did you listen at that? I told you, I know my thoughts for you and that but it. <laughs> Amen. let them make you believe that you were not? My God. I told you when you came out, I gave you what you needed. You know, we like to talk about this, but everybody don't. I gave you what you needed. Sisters, he gave you exactly what you needed, and he didn't make you be a brother when you were sister. All right. He gave you sister stuff. Now, if you got to go get surgery to change it, I'll let you know something ain't right. Because if that's really you, then it shouldn't be no change. Amen. You don't have to change it if that's who you really are. Amen. You ain't got to take your womb out and, and put it over here. So this can look like me when it's not. Because if it did, it would have had a womb. God don't make that type of mistake. What type of God we think we serve? He don't make mistakes like that. Amen. He don't make those type of mistakes. As a matter of fact, he don't make no mistakes. He told us what was going to happen in, in Matthew 24. And guess what? It's happening because he don't make no mistakes. Amen. He said, I made you the head and not the tail. That's it. Everything is on condition. When God says if, that means it's on condition. Of what? Obedience. Amen. We don't know. People are confused. They don't know what's right and what's wrong. They don't know what's God and what's not. 
But if we go to Galatians chapter 5, I read it last night. It just simply, and I do that because that's like a summary. Amen? It's a summary. Glory to God. Galatians 5. And I'm reading it because, amen, I don't want people to think I'm just coming up with this. But I'm just giving you scriptures. Verse 16. Let me go back to verse 13 because, amen. 5 and 13 says, For brethren, notice what he said. You've been called unto liberty. Not bondage, but liberty. This is what he said. Only, this is the only thing I'm asking you with this liberty that you have. Use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Love is a big deal with God. We are here today and able to make it and get encouraged because of the love that God has for us. By love, serve one another. Now that being said, anything that's not love is against the will of God. Amen. Verse 14, for all the law, not some of it, but all the law is fulfilled in one word. Everything that's being said in Genesis, Ex Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, all the way to Revelation, all the laws fulfilled in one word. This is the law. Amen. Really, the law of grace. And I want to say that. Amen. I'm not even operating off the Mosaic law, because the Mosaic law says, I can hurt you if you hurt me. That's not love. Amen. Amen. But the law of grace says, everything in it is fulfilled in one word, even in this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That came up under Jesus' teaching. Mm -hmm. Love your neighbor as yourself. Notice what he said, verse 15. But if ye bite and devour one another with trespassing the commandments of God, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the spirit. Amen. And ye shall not. That's only if we're walking in the spirit. That's why it's so important for us to be in the spirit. Because if we're not in the spirit, then we're going to fulfill whatever this flesh wants us to do. He said, but if we walk in the spirit, ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. But the flesh lusts against the spirit. There's no agreement between your flesh. You can't please your flesh and please God too. All right. Amen. Amen. He said the flesh... Lusteth against the spirit, verse 17, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary. They're not in agreement. They are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. So if there's any spirit that comes to you and say, you can walk in the flesh, you can automatically go to the scriptures and say, no, that's not scripture. There's no agreement with my flesh and with spirit. Now, my flesh might want this, but it's not the will of God. Amen? He said... Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. If any man defile the temple of God here in our minds, the Bible says this, him God will destroy. Because as we think in our hearts, very important, so is he. Because the enemy has told us, ah, oh, if it's in your mind, you're all right. But that's not what scripture says. The spirit said if it's in our minds, amen, we are guilty. That's what grace says. If it's in your mind, you've committed the act. Amen. You're guilty. Glory to God. Somebody says, as long as I don't touch them in my hand, I'm all right. You're not, because you touched them in your mind. And how many have felt like somebody in the scripture and you felt unclean? That's how powerful that spirit is. Amen? If it's in your mind, amen, then you're guilty. But this is what he said. If we obey God, then we're not going to obey the flesh. We won't be, and guess what? So what flesh want to do it ain't going to be able to do because we're surrendering to the will of God. Amen? But if ye be led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. Now the works of the flesh, so if we don't know what they are, he's going to reveal to the enemy. I'm going to show you what the works of the flesh are because people don't know, everybody don't know what the works of the flesh is. But how are you going to know what, what's God and what's not? Simply this. Verse 19 says the works of the flesh, they're manifest. You can see it. 
Amen? Amen. Which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and most importantly, and such like. Anything that looks like it. Anything that's in agreement with verse 19 to verse 21. Amen. Those are the things we put up resistance against. Those are the things that we stand up and say, you are not going to inhabit my vessel. Everything from 19 to 21 is a no. Everything from 19 to 21 deals with flesh. Amen. And we kill the flesh. Paul said, I die daily. That means he resists all those spirits from 19 to 21. Why resist them? Because he said in the last part of 21, they which do such things as action shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now we want to be in the presence of God in our eternity. So amen. We know in order to do that, we got to stay away from everything from verse 19 to 21. Now everything from 19 to 21 feel good to the flesh. But it's a destroyer. It'll cause your flesh to be defiled. Amen? So those are warning signs. That's a big yellow warning sign and it's saying stay away. Stay away from this. Amen? Because it's going to destroy you. Amen? So when we do anything from 19 to 21, we are trespassing, trespassing the commandment of God. Amen? amen. Anytime we allow any of that to be manifested, amen, then we are giving up or we're swapping out, amen, our, at our place in the kingdom of God. Verse 22. But, amen, outside of that, but the fruit of the Spirit, because remember, they're one against the other. They're in opposition. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Amen. The works of the flesh, hatred. The fruit of the spirit, love. Exact opposite. Joy. Amen. I can promise you, when you go from 19 to 21, you ain't going to find no joy. Amen. You're not going to find peace from 19 to 21. Long suffering. Gentleness. Goodness. Faith. Meekness, temperance. Notice what he said. Against such, there is no law. And they that belong to Christ, how many belong to Christ? Ooh. They that belong to Christ have crucified the flesh. Everything connected with this flesh, we crucify. They have crucified the flesh. With the affections and thus have to be crucified. If we live in the spirit, he didn't say visit. He said live. Amen. That's a permanent place. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory. What glory? That glory that says I can be better than God. That glory that make you lift up yourself. Provoking one another. Envying one another. These are the works of the flesh. Amen. You find somebody that's a provoker. That's a work of the flesh. Amen. That's trespassing against the commandment of God. Amen. God told us no. But flesh does the exact opposite of what God says. And that's where we put up resistance. Against those spirits. Those spirits that try to bring us down. In a fleshly level. We put up resistance against that. Amen. That, that won't let us embrace each other in Christ. And love each other. And forgive. Amen. Because for Christians. You know I think that for Christians. Because the conviction is under their, their conviction. Their love for Christ is so deep. Amen. Until it's like a. A brother and a sister. Amen. Nobody can get to you better than your, your brother or your sister. Because your love is so deep. In the world they don't have that type of love anymore. Some people do. 
on the average. Amen. But a lot of people, amen, they, they lack that love. And then for family. Amen. Families, they're in court now. Families, amen, they're they're at odds with each other now. Amen. Families, you know, people that they, they're, they're kill family now. When it used to be a time that didn't happen. Okay, maybe it did, but you just didn't hear about it. Amen, because ain't nothing new about the son, but we didn't hear about it like we do today. Amen. It's just such an opposition. You, you, they got the programs on TV. And you know, you can't believe everything that you see, but they got programs on TV that show what children kill the grandparents or kill the parents or kill each other. Amen. It's, it's just rough because we're dealing with spirit. You're not dealing with a person. You're dealing with a spirit. And when we walk in the spirit, we can see that spirit. Amen. You don't have to speak out loud, but you let the devil know, I see you. I see you and amen. That's not going to work. And we put up resistance against it. That's what the Bible said. He said, what? Well, resist the devil and what happened? Did it say he might? He will because we have that type of resistance. We actually can resist whatever the flesh is trying to get us to do. We can stand against that thing. Uh -uh, I'm not fixing to do that. Why? Because times are too precious. And because of the love that we have for God. Amen. And when you love somebody like that, then you're not going to fight them. Amen? People don't have that type of love anymore. You got a lot of people now, they, you know, they're not young as we are, but, you know, they got an age on them. They say, I don't ever want to get to where I can't help myself. Because they know, amen, they done did for their kids. They, they have given them everything that hearts could desire. I've seen kids stand in the store and not even know what to get because they done already had everything. And they little kids. Amen. They don't start out with the, the little toys where they have to pretend and make believe. It's got to do something big. Amen. We used to have little walking dolls. How many of them? Amen. And you know, some reason in your mind you think when they say walk and they really don't get up and walk on their own. But you got to raise the arm up to get the leg. You remember them dolls? People used to love baby alive. Now people ain't only buying baby alive like they do because they got to work. They ain't gonna change no diapers. <laughs> They're not fixing to be feeding them, amen. You can't get them no little broom and sweeper. They're gonna put that thing over in the corner somewhere, amen. It better get up and walk on his own. It better speak. It better fly without them touching it, amen. And, and you know they moving into no batteries now, because they know they, they ain't even got it in the buy battery to keep the toy going. Oh, yeah. It's the truth, it's the time that we live. We have given them everything. Do you think? If they're not going to change baby alive, you think they're going to change you? If they ain't going to help the walking dog walk, you think they're going to help you? Some people are saying, let me keep my strength. And guess what? Some say, yeah, come on over here, join the club. Get in this exercise place and keep yourself going so your children won't have to be put in that predicament. Amen? So what are we saying? It's got to be God. It's got to be God because God is all about love. And love is what Satan is taking from people. Amen? He takes that away. Glory to God. But we hold fast to that and we let that devil know, you can't have my love. Amen? That, uh -uh. Because love is God. And the Bible tells us this. And I hope I'm quoting it right. It says, the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Amen. Amen. And we know from our own personal testimony, we get upset, we're murmuring, and we're complaining, and things not going the way we want to. Do your situation ever get solved? It's something about murmuring that never fix your situation. Amen. 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 But prayer, the man of God say, it changed people. Yes, yes, yes. Prayer changed people. Yes. And people change things. Yes. Amen. When you pray, somebody said, everything is going to be all right. Amen? Everything ain't going to be all right. But that that you're dealing with, amen, God will deal with it. See, I can't tell you everything will be all right because the Bible said the last days are going to be wickeder and wickeder. But it will be all right for you because you'll know how to go through the storm. Amen? 
So we're not going to stand here and pretend that we're not going to have storms to go through. But what we announced to Satan, amen, is that we're going to stand on the word of God. I don't care what come and what go. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what the situation looks like. Amen. Ah. God is not a liar. So we manifest our love by God, but God by letting this world know we're standing on what God says. Amen. Most of them, whose side are you going to be on? Are you going to be on the side that says God is not just and, and God is not right and God doesn't love us and why is God letting us? Why is God? That's an insult to the Lord to say, why is God letting all this happen? God ain't letting nothing happen. We're just not making the right decisions. God said, I put before you good and evil. He said, amen, light and dark, righteousness and unrighteousness, blessings and curses. And he said, now I'm telling you what I put before you and I'm going to tell you which one to go. I'm telling you which one to choose. I'm not going to make you do anything you don't want to do. But I'm just going to tell you what to choose. I got life and death before you, but I'm going to tell you to choose life. Now when you choose life, this is what's going to happen. When you choose me, this is what's going to happen. You remember? All these blessings are following you. But if you make the wrong decision, if you don't listen at me when I'm trying to talk to you, and you listen at all these other spirits that bombard your head, that's making your head get big and lift it up, amen, then you get the result of your master that, that you obey. To whom you yield. That means you got the willing to surrender your members. My God. Servants to obey. Amen. You got to make the choice. God gave it to us. Amen. To make this. You, you don't understand. People say, well, God is not just and he doesn't love us. Amen. Where you been? <laughs> Scripture says what you buy. A God that don't love you ain't going to tell you, amen, you got the authority to bind something or lose something. He ain't going to give you that type of authority because he ain't going to trust you. Jesus, Jesus. Amen? Wow. Amen? Whatever you bind shall be bound. I'm just going to back you up. Amen. Only in right. Amen. Whatever you lose it, I'm going to see what you're going to do. What, what decision are you going to make? It's going to be loosened. It's up to you. Well, Lord, tell me what to do. No. I want to see where your heart is at. It's up to you. But I'm not going to, I ain't going to loosen them. Amen? Amen? But, Lord, I want you to loosen me. Amen? Amen? What is God doing? He's looking at your heart. Amen? Amen? The Bible speaks of two sons. Amen? And their daddy gave him a commandment. Amen? He told the one son, go do it. And he said, amen, I, I, I can't do it, daddy. I'm not going to do it. Amen. I'm not able. I know his daddy was hurt. But he didn't force him. He said he couldn't do it. He looked at the other son. He said, I want you to do it then. He said, I go, sir. Respectfully. I'll go. And the Bible said the very one that said he wouldn't was the one that did it. But the one that said, I go, sir. He didn't do it. Amen. How many times have we told the Lord, God, I'm going to do this? And we didn't do it. Amen. But the one that busted, Lord, I don't see why I got through this. And when they got through doing all that fussing, they did exactly what God told them to do. Because they received the conviction. And the young one, amen, was drawing down with words, but it wasn't in his heart. Amen? amen. We're being put to the test. Amen? amen. So I need you to understand Satan had it on the flower bed of ease. All he had to do was just praise God. The Bible said he was beautiful. He had all that glory. He was the covering cherub. He had all this light about himself. He had it going on. God's right hand angel. Amen. He knew. But somewhere along the way, he felt like that man, he wanted to get his part. He felt like God didn't need to get all that glory by himself. He wanted a part of that. He went from one angel to the other. And I'm going to tell you something. When your heart is not right, it's easy to be convinced. 
Amen. What am I saying? Those other angels were thinking the same thing, so the spirits were in agreement. He was able to draw one third of heaven. Amen. He got their attention. They didn't stand up for God. They went along with Satan. You're right. We're doing all of this. We need to get a little glory for ourselves too. And, and Michael was smoking. He wasn't smoking like the world smoked either. He had no vape or none of that. He was steaming. He probably went to God on many occasions. Look, why don't you go on and let me just knock him out? God said no. Why don't you say something? Why don't you do something in love with the world telling God today? Why don't you say something? Why don't you do something? Because when iniquity comes to his client, when it was time, when it was right, don't mess with him right now. Let the, the tails grow up with the wheat. I don't want to mess with the fragile ones. I need them to get strong. I'm trying to build them. I'm trying to work on them. Leave them alone. When the time is right, then I'll tell you to bind up the tears. Cast them in the hill. Amen? Amen. Revelation 12, if you will. Amen. Revelation 12. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 7. There was war, first and last, in heaven. This wasn't on earth, this was in heaven. There was war in heaven. Michael and his angels. God said, okay, now tell Satan that he has to go. This is the time I won't take him home. And all the roads that's following him, they can go with him. Michael went and said, look. Our master said you have to go. God says you have to go. By this time, Satan has great resistance. I'm not going nowhere. And ain't nobody going to make me leave. Amen. Resistance. If he'd have just walked out, it wouldn't have been a problem. But he put up resistance because he felt like, amen, he was greater than God. Yet, my God had enough power to draw one third of heaven. So he put up resistance. Surely he wasn't going to listen to Michael. Amen. Michael didn't get troubled because he wouldn't listen at him. It didn't even say Michael was shaking in his shoes. But what it said was war. Now, if our master said, you got to leave, you're getting up out of here. Amen? There was war in heaven. Michael and his angels, the obedient, fought against the dragon. Now, when I read that, I don't see where God is fighting. Michael and his angels fought against who? The dragon. And the dragon fought back to resistance. That's why it's called a war. The dragon fought and his angels. Very immediately, verse 8, and prevailed not. He's not going to prevail now either. Neither was there all those that followed Satan Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. Yes. My God. Amen. They lost their glory. Mm -hmm. They lost their position. Yes. My God. They were changed from something beautiful to the spirit that they carry. Yes. And I believe when you see them demons, that's the spirit, amen, that they, they carry, that they look like. Yes. My God. Amen. It's not good. Mm -hmm. The works of the flesh is not good and it don't look pretty. Amen. It doesn't look good on none of us. Amen. 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 And the great dragon, my God. the great dragon, my God. was cast out. Amen? They didn't walk him out. They kicked him out. He was cast out. That old serpent, let me know who that dragon was, called the devil and Satan, so that nobody would be in confusion of who that was. He was cast out of heaven forever. Amen? Yeah. Notice what the Bible said he does. He deceives, not part of the world. He's a deceiver for the whole world. You have a choice to make. You have a decision. He got it free. And he messed it up. God said, now those that come in now, they're going to choose me freely. You're not going to
got to be made to serve God. In this world, people, they get a hand to force you to love them. God ain't forcing nobody to love him. It's going to be willingly. You're going to choose God of your own accord, free will. Amen. Satan didn't choose that. So he was able to turn against God. Created good, but iniquity was found in him. Amen. The Bible says this. I heard a loud voice, verse 10. Well, let me go to verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent, because he had been there from the beginning. That old serpent, the time God created him, called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. Amen. So if that demon tell you not being deceived, you can go on and say that's a lie because I was deceived because the word of God says it. He was cast out into the earth. Not just by himself and his angels were cast out with him. They're not gods anymore. They're in bondage to Satan. Amen. And they were cast out. Amen. Verse 10. I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? You cannot get the results of God. You cannot get salvation until that that's not of God is cast out. You've got to get everything out of you that's not of God in order for salvation to spring and bring forth. Amen. Now is come salvation. Why? Amen. And strength. So you lose your strength when you harbor anything that's not of God. And the kingdom of our God. And the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down. Which accused them before our God day and night. Amen. Day and night you being brought before the Lord. Why is it always me? He's an accuser of the brethren. Amen. But notice, even though he was accusing the brethren, it didn't work. Verse 11, they overcame him with the blood of the lamb, by the blood of the lamb, and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. They chose God. They chose God over the persecution. They chose God over the loss. God was all too happy to tell the devil, have you considered my servant Job? Because he knew Job's heart was to him. He knew that Job would not be persuaded to back up on God because he lost things. Amen. Or because he came up under attack. Amen. He wasn't ashamed of his God. And this day and time, especially what the word of God says, that the world don't want us to, to say what God said. The world don't want us to say that God came that we may have life and that more abundantly. Amen. God, the world don't want us to say, amen, I'm 25. You know good and well you ain't no 25. Said who? There's no time with God. When you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, time stopped. Who you going to believe? The devil try to make you feel crazy. If I say something like that, they're going to think I'm crazy. I don't care what they think. Scriptures is going to be right. God's word is going to be right. Life is right. Amen. God is a miracle worker. Amen. We don't operate off what the world says. We operate off of what God said. Remember the scripture says Satan is a deceiver. Amen. Amen. Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28. Verse 4 says, With thy wisdom, 28 and 4 of Ezekiel, with thy wisdom and with thine understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches. People can do that. Amen. What we understand in this world is, amen. We don't focus on flesh. We focus on spirit. Amen. And we focus on spirit and we put Galatians 5, amen, 19 to 24, works of the flesh and works of the spirit, and we put everything against that. Amen. 
If it's the work of the spirit, we know it's of God. But if, we work, if it's the work of the flesh, then we know the devil's behind that. Amen? Amen. This is what he said. Verse 4. With thy wisdom and with thine understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches, and hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasures. By thy great wisdom and by thy traffic hast thou increased. See, because they got wisdom. That was that was on Solomon. Amen. Now, I mean, I'm not talking about there, but I'm just saying that's the spirit he had. By thy great wisdom and by thy traffic hast thou increased thy riches, and thine heart. It's lifted up because of thy riches. So much so that Solomon was worried about who was going to inherit that that he had worked hard for. Verse 6, Therefore thus said the Lord God, Because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God, you're trying to make yourself be God, behold, therefore, I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom. And they shall defile, notice what he said, thy brightness. That glory that you know for yourself, anybody that's lifted up, it won't take long before somebody bring them back down. Amen? Amen. They're going to rise up and the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. They shall bring thee down to the pit. And thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. Wilt thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am God? Pharaoh couldn't say it. None of those others that raised their heels up against God, they couldn't say it. Will you still stand and say that you're God? Here I couldn't. But thou shalt be a man and no God in the hand of him that slayed thee. They don't see the spirit, they see you. Amen. They don't see your God, they see you. That means we have to manifest the character of God if we want them to see God. Because they see him through us. They don't see your God. Amen. Thou shalt be a man and no God in the hand of him that slayeth thee. He's not going to kill you thinking he's killing God. He's looking at your flesh. David recognized that when he offended his brethren, he was offending God. I believe it was in Matthew 25 that says, when you feed the hungry, you're feeding God. When you clothe the naked, you're clothing God. When do we do this? Because well, when you did it to the least, you did it to me. Yeah. Saul understood, amen, when he met God and he said, why are you persecuting me? It wasn't the spirit he was persecuting. It was the people of God. Amen. amen. Yeah. Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus. You persecute. What am I saying? I can't trespass against you without trespassing against God. Why? Because God commanded me to love you. So if I don't love you, I'm trespassing against God. I am disobeying his commandment. His direct commandment. Amen? What am I saying? I can't spit at you. Amen? And say I love Jesus. He said, how can you say you love me? And you can't even love the one that you see. But Jesus said, when you see me, you see the Father. Why are you still looking for God? When we see each other, we see God. You might focus on the flesh, but it's God. And we cannot not love each other and not trespass against God. Amen? Amen. He said this as we read on. Therefore, thus said the Lord, verse 6 again, God, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God, behold, therefore, I will be strength, I will bring strangers upon thee. The terrible. Amen. God even recognizes terribles in his nation. The terrible of the nations. And they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom. And they shall defile thy brightness. They shall bring thee down to the pit. And thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. Wilt thou say then, or wilt thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am God? But thou shalt be a man and no God in the hand of him 
that slayeth thee. Thou shalt die the deaths. There's an answer in the there. Thou shalt die the deaths of the uncircumcised by the hand of strangers, those that don't know the Lord. Amen. For I have spoken it, said the Lord God. That kind of gets Ezekiel out the way. God, God said, I have spoken it. Amen. Moreover, verse 11, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God. He's speaking to this king, but what he's doing is speaking to the spirit that's controlling that king. Amen. Just as Jesus spoke unto that spirit that was speaking out of Peter's mouth when he said, Get thee hence, Satan. He wasn't talking to Peter. He was talking to that demon that he knew was speaking out of Peter's mouth. Peter didn't understand. He thought it was hurt behind him. But he didn't know that he was being used. Amen? Notice what he said. Moreover, verse 11, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation against the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus said the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sun full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. And then what it said about Satan? Thou hast been in Eden. Now I'm going to tell you something. That king of Tyrus was not in Eden. But Satan was. That's why he's called the old servant. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Now when I read the scriptures, I see that it was Satan and Eden. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardines, topaz, the diamond. The barrel, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire. And I believe that's why Satan have people killing each other over these stones. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's an unclean spirit that's causing them. Amen. To value that over God. Amen. The sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrays and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was. He has a beginning. Satan was created. He has to begin. He's not God. Nobody is God. God is the only one that has no beginning. He is the beginning. But Satan has a beginning. In the day that thou was created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covered. Believe me. A natural king is not an angel. Amen. We might call our children little angels. But we know good and well. Amen. They, they flesh. Right. Amen? Right. This is what he said. Thou art, verse 14, the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou was upon the whole was that's passed, upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Amen? Notice he didn't burn off. He's walking up and down in it. Thou was you're not anymore, but you were perfect. That means he was created perfect in the day that thou was created. Until a change took place. He got beside himself. Amen. Iniquity was birthed in him. Till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. And thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee, what? As profane out of the mountain of God. Amen. And that what it said in Revelation 12, he was cast out of the mountain of God and all the angels that were with him. I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God and I will destroy thee, O covering chair, from the midst of the stones of fire. Why? Thy heart, pride, was lifted up. Why? Because of thy beauty. Amen. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all of them that behold thee. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, never and never shalt thou be any more. Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
Verse 10 says, All they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy bowels, and the worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. <coughs> How, verse 12, art thou fallen from heaven? Isaiah was being kind. He said, Fallen. Amen. But the word says he was cast out of heaven. Amen. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Amen. Thank you, Jesus, son of the morning. How art thou cut down to the ground? What is he doing? Weakening the nations, which did weaken the nations. But thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. He said, I will call strangers to come upon me. Will you say to them that you're a God? They're not going to see you as a God. But he said, I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down, verse 15, to hell, to the sides of the pit. He said, in, in, in Ezekiel, walking on the fire, the stone of the fire, they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man, amen, that made the earth? To tremble. Amen. That did shake kingdoms. That made the world as a wilderness. And destroyed the cities. There are, that's what Satan is doing. That open, underline it in your Bible, open not the house of his prisoners. So how did the people of God get free if Satan didn't let them go? Satan kept them in prison. People are in prison. Their minds are in prison. There's nobody that will free them except God. Amen. Amen. A just God. A God that will forgive. There's no way. The Bible does not, from Genesis to Revelation, does not say that God's purpose is to destroy us. Amen. Amen. To imprison us. Jesus came to set the captives free. Amen. 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 To free us. He didn't need Satan to free us. He did it himself. But the word of God says, Isaiah 14 and 17, he opened not the house of his prisoners. They were prisoners to Satan. Amen? All the people of God, all the major prophets and the minor prophets and everybody that was transitioned before Jesus went to that grave were prisoners of Satan. Amen? Somebody said, not everybody. Elisha wasn't. Moses wasn't. Enoch wasn't. Amen. But the multitude were. Amen. They were prisoners of Satan. And the Bible says this. Thank you, Jesus. He opened not the house of his prisoners. All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, everyone in his own house. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch, and as the raiment of those that are slain, thrust through with a sword, that go down to the stones of the pit as the carcass trodden underfoot. Amen. Brought down, Satan was brought down. Amen. We have a choice today. We have to make ready every second of every day for God's coming. Amen. We know we're in the last days. Are we going to be like the five foolish virgins still marrying and giving in marriage at the time that Jesus comes? When he was born into this world, they were still going about their own merry business. Nobody was making preparation. Amen? God is saying to us, amen, get some oil in your lamp. Make preparation every day. Are we preparing to die? No, we're preparing for Jesus. Amen? We're preparing for Jesus. We're preparing for whatever God has in this last day. People want to know, amen, what time and what's the sign of your coming, amen. They want to know, amen, when Jesus is coming. They want to know, amen, well, what all is going to happen? You don't have to know. God's already told us persecution. God's already told us the whole world's going to hate you. This is not news 
for us. The thing is, we won't pass the test. We're not making preparation. We do that on our knees. We do that, amen, talking to God. Amen? amen. What am I saying? If you can't get down on your knees, the more knees just won't do right. They lock up on you. Put it before the Lord. The knees have to get right. I don't care if you're sitting or laying. Get before God. Make preparation. Because we know we're in the last days. The cry is going to be made. And we have to have oil in our lamps. Amen. That we can go in. Where? Into God. Amen. And we can enter into God that those that are wanting the mountains to fall on them because they're going to want it, we'll be able to walk through it. Discouragement won't be able to take hold upon us. But you have to make a decision in your life. And it's vitally important. Whatever the test that God chooses to bring upon you, say to God as Mary did, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. God help me to pass this test. Amen. Amen. We have got to pass the test. Amen. To walk into what God is telling us to walk into the love of Jesus. The fullness of the love. You can't enter into love without manifesting love. And God is love. Amen. Amen. So we can't enter into God to find rest without love. We've got to have the love. Amen. Amen. When you have the love, amen, then you won't say to God, Lord, I can't serve you because you didn't be, I done been through too much. Lord, I don't even understand why you didn't move and make them people believe me. I believe every person that's committed whatever crime they committed heard from God and didn't know it. And they made the wrong choice. Amen. God's not sitting back like he can't handle it. He's speaking to everybody in this world. But it's up to us to listen and obey. Amen. It's up to us to surrender our vessels to that that's good and to make our stand against the works of the flesh. Amen? People have been wounded all over this world. Amen. Amen. Wounded. Got parents that have been wounded. Grandparents that have been wounded. And the devil wants it to be a generational thing. It's not generational. God just waiting on somebody to stand up and say, I'm not going to receive this spirit. Amen? Amen. I don't know, man of God, I believe it was you that said it, um, you can have two children raised up in an abusive home or got parents that are bound by some addiction and you can they'll go and they all they both have the same testimony. I'm like I am because of who I was raised with or how I was raised. But yet they have different lifestyles. The one is like they are because they chose to walk away from Amen, what they were raised up in, and the other one walked in the very same footsteps. Both have the same testimony. I'm bound by this habit because of the way I was raised. And this one is saying, I refuse to go that direction. I refuse to get the habit and, and yield to the habit because I was raised. The choice is yours. Amen. Amen. The choice is yours. Amen. Choose life. When you choose life, you choose love. Amen. 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 And we get victory over Satan. Amen. Amen. We choose peace. I'm going to read this last scripture. Amen. I'm pretty sure when I read it, you'll say, this is what I choose. Philippians 4 and 8 is one of my favorite scriptures. Outside of Galatians 5 and so many others. But Philippians 4 and 8. And it says this. Thank you, Jesus. Finally. Putting the seal on it. Finally, brethren, whatsoever, whatever things are true, truth is not in Satan. Whatsoever things are honest, you know good and well he ain't honest, he's a follower of liars. Whatsoever things are just, anything in this world that makes us do things that are unjust is not of God. Whatsoever things are pure, you know ain't nothing pure in this world, but God. Whatsoever things are lovely, Whatsoever things are a good report. Amen. How many people in that death one that what they got all that negative report and get you discouraged? Amen. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, and these are the things that I want you to think on. Amen. When I read that, it's almost like a paradise. Amen. It's peace and 
virtue and love and what's right. Amen. Just make you feel good. It's easy to praise God when you're thinking on those things. And guess what? That right there in verse 8 is your weapon against Satan. Because Satan doesn't want you to do things that are just. And he doesn't want things that are lovely. He doesn't want things that are pure. Amen. He doesn't want you to have praise. Amen. He got tired of praising God. He don't want you to praise God. Amen. He don't want you to love God. He doesn't want you to manifest any of the characters of God. But we stand and we let the devil know that we will. You're not going to tell me what to do. I'm going to praise God. My flesh may not feel like it, but I'm going to praise God. I might not be able to raise up my hands, but I'm going to pray God you help me to lift these hands and give you praise. Because I choose freely to praise God. I choose to love. I choose the things that are just and pure. I choose peace. I choose things that are lovely. Amen? Amen. And therefore, I put up resistance. I buck up against things that are not of God. I fight. Amen? Somebody said the good fight of faith. I fight for my life and for the life of my loved ones. Amen? Amen. Come on, stand to your feet if you will. Amen. We will not bow to the devil. We will not have preachers that have been so bad for years. That have been so beat down until they've given up. And they've backed away. I can't serve God. Many of the people that you speak to in the world today are backsliders. That backed up on the Lord because they were hurt so bad. Many of them, amen. When Dottie Peoples came out hurt, hurt in the church, I often tell people we were hurt before we came to the church. But nothing hurts you worse because we're saying church. That means God. Amen. When people come to the house of the Lord, they're saying, God, I understand I was hurt out there in the world, but you're supposed to know the Lord. And they get hurt. Amen. And in their minds, the devil is telling them, God failed you. No, God didn't fail you. We just made, amen, a choice that we didn't make. We made a decision, amen, and we didn't listen at God. Amen. We didn't listen at God. And God said this, when you're hurt, don't focus on the tear. Focus on the weak. Amen. Glory to God. Clap your hands for Jesus. Head up. Amen. Fight the good fight of faith. Amen. Amen. Satan ain't gonna let us have it easy. Amen. We got to fight for what we want. That good thing that you want, fight for it. Amen. Amen. It belongs to you. You have a right to it. You have that God gave it to you. Amen. Amen. That prodigal son, his brother had everything he needed. He had the access and didn't even know it. Because he was convinced, because the devil told him. Amen. If he touched it, daddy would get upset and didn't know it was already his. See, when you have something and you don't realize that you have access to it, Satan can rob you of it. Amen. Joy belongs to you. Peace belongs to you. You don't have to give that up, but you hold on to it. Love, we are people that love. We thrive off of love. Amen. We don't give that up. Amen. We have access to that. So we resist Satan. Anything that comes to rob us of that good thing that God has given us. We fight back. It's mine and I'm not giving it. Right. Amen. Clap your hands on the top of Come on, let's give him a praise for him. Come on. You know, I tell you, I'm doing so good right now. You know, the word is what we all need. You can be feeling bad, the word will make you feel good. You can be weak, the word will make you stronger. You can be confused, the word will give you the word will give you peace, give you understanding. You know, and the word is it's really God. The Bible said that everything going down 
but the word of God. The Bible says the heaven is going to pass, the earth is going to pass, but the word of God is going to stand forever. And I found out a long time ago that all we need is the word of God. Matter of fact, that's all I need, all I want, and all that there. I just want the word. And I found out, true, true to God, that the word is going to go forth one way or the other. It's going to be for good or it'll turn to be for bad. You can take that word and read it and work your way to the place that you need to be, or you can take that word and read it and let it kill you. Or you listen to me, the word brings life. That's right. If you don't accept it, it'll bring death. That word is more powerful mm -hmm. about it than any two-edged sword. Yes, yes, and it, it, it cuts well. You know, other stuff can't cut. It goes down to the marble bone. It goes well. Uh, uh, you know, where the eye can't see, mm -hmm. man can't go. Man can't go in a man's head. Oh, Even though he tries it, but he just can't go in there and mess with all those love. You got little cells in your brain and they go to tamper with them, amen, then mess them up. They just mess around and touch one of those uh, brain cells in the wrong way, then it'll mess up the whole body. But God, amen, put all of that in his rightful place. Who would serve a God like that? I'm, I'm so thankful tonight. I found out to the God that God just want to raise us all up and want to get us to the place of the, of the, of the spirit. She was talking about the fruits of the Spirit. Right. How that, you know, the, uh, the fruits of the Spirit is love, peace, joy, all that good right. stuff. Amen. But that's another tree, turn to God, that it got, you see, like it got more fruit than that tree. Did. But see, the Bible said, even with the Mosaic law, the Bible talks about how the law gave so many different commandments. But Jesus said the whole law is fulfilled in just this. It's to love God. That's it. To love God with all your heart, with all your might, with all your soul. And he said, the second one is like unto it, is to love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's right. Trying to God, love is the key. Amen. That they would want us to love. Right. Love will get you out of any situation you have got yourself in. Yeah. Love, amen, brought a man back from the dead. Had been dead for four days. And had he not called him by name, love would have got everybody up. Everybody would have rose about the grave. If we just said, hey amen, amen, dead be risen. Everybody would have rose up. That's the kind of love a man had. How many can say amen? amen. He told that woman that touched his garment. She said, she said, well, I, I, I ain't got to touch his body. If I just fucking touch it. So a man thinking this sort of that man. If I could just touch the him of his garment. I shall be made whole. And guess what? She was made whole. And Jesus felt the, the virtue that came out of her body, out of his body, into her body. And he said, somebody touch me. And then Peter said, Lord, how in the world can you say somebody touch me, touch you, and all these people, everybody touching you. He said, no, somebody touch me for real. I felt the virtue as it left my body. And the lady said, Lord, it was I. I knew if I but just, just to touch the give of your government, I should be made whole. Are you listening to me? And Jesus said, woman, your faith have made thee whole. Are you listening to me? God, I want you to, I want us to go up together. I want us to get to this place in the spirit, amen, that nothing can bother because can nothing stop a person that's full of God's love. Sickness can't do it. Diseases can't do it. Talk to me, somebody. And a demon in here can do nothing with you if you're showing forth the love of God. Are you listening to me? Amen. And, 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 and I do know that uh, uh, God can can do strange things. God is all about you know, saving soul. But God is all about, you know, God is all about saving a soul. But God is just about saving a soul. God is about saving souls. You know, everybody. So God is all about, all about saving souls. So what God would do, God would get you I'll, I'll catch you or I'll let you go through a trial or a test to get you to the place that you need to be and then he'll just take you on. Then God also can get you to the place you need to be and take you over. Come on somebody. He can take you over. 
See, 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 see the, 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 the gospel got to be preached. And, 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 and the, the theologians talk about, amen, when the rapture takes place and everybody gone, amen, the gospel uh, is going to be preached. You know, tomorrow. It's going to be, who's going to preach it? Who's going to preach the gospel and everybody's going to be gone? They talk about everybody, the people, the, pre the church is going to be taken out. And the people going to be left here, amen, to fend for themselves. Turn to God, God going to leave us here to preach the gospel to every creature. They are waiting on the word of God. This world, to the God, they're lying in hope. They don't know what they're hoping for. But amen, I promise you both, they wait. They wait. There's somebody trying to find them a liquor bottle. Maybe somebody trying to find a sniff up uh, drugs up through their nose. They're looking for what we got. And they're thinking that they can get it another way. They, another, they, they, want, they want some peace. They, want, they, 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 want, they, they don't want to worry no more. They want to have peace. They want to have joy. They want to be healed. But yeah. well, God, amen, they cannot get healed. They cannot have peace the way that they're going. But they're searching. The Bible says the earnest expectation of the creatures waiting on the manifestation of the Son of God. And I'm going to tell you something. We can talk it. We can make it sound good. We can make it feel good. We, we can make it be so good to my God and make people have something up on their head. But turn to God, if it's not being done by the love of Jesus Christ, amen, it ain't going to do no good. Amen. It's, it's going to take God's love to heal God's people, to save God's people. It's going to take the, the Bible said God loved the world that he gave Jesus to come into the world. Amen. How many know his coming wasn't in vain? Might be in vain for some, but not this coming was not he didn't come in vain. This coming was not in vain. He came to save those that was lost. He said I didn't come to call righteous, the righteous to, but I come to call sinners to repentance. The righteous, you say you already got it, you don't need me. So I come to call the one that don't she said something a few months ago, and I've been saying it a lot here this last past month. Amen. God Want us to love the unlovable. Amen. The people that, that, that you know. You just, they just, they just unlovable. You just, but you got to love them anyway. Yes. And when we get there. When we get there. When you get to the place that you can love. I mean, don't know what they say what they do. Mm. I love you anyway. Don't let nobody. Amen. Don't let that. That's control. Love is the key. Are you listening to me? Love is the key. We talk about faith. Faith is good. But the Bible declares that faith without works is dead. And it also says that works without faith is dead. But I come to tell you tonight that neither one of them is no good without love. The Bible says you can have faith to move the mountain, have not charity. It profits you nothing, but the mountain didn't move. Somebody got healed by, behind what you did, but you didn't get nothing out of it. Because you didn't do it right. You didn't do it through love. Love is the key to the God. Amen. The whole, don't let nobody, amen, put you in bondage. Are you listening to me? Yeah. See, if you, if you don't listen to what I'm saying and take it right, you'll miss it. I said, don't let nobody put you in bondage. Now, if you're thinking that, okay, well, don't put me in bondage. No, what I mean by that, don't walk around with a chip on your shoulder. Walk around with a spirit at them. Then you're in bondage. That's control. Do not let nobody have that type of control over you. God gave us power. Amen. Matthew 16, 19. And she quoted it tonight. Whatever you bind here on earth, it shall be bound in heaven. God going to put the seal on it. Whatever you loosen here on earth in love shall be loosened in heaven. Come on, God. Jesus said that when you see me, you'll say to Father, I said, thou then show the Father, I'm never going to get out way. Somebody said, he said, and I've read it in the Bible, that he said, I am in my Father, and my Father is in me, 
and I shall be in you and you shall be in me. That meaning, amen, when people see you, they're supposed to see God. And if they don't have God, they won't know they're looking at God. But they still see God. They think it's you, but it ain't none of you. It's God. But you listen to me? They, they, they see you, but they, they see God, but they think it's you. You remember you told that woman that time? Over there in the city. You remember that? I forgot what her name was. But you know, you know what she said? And you told us that. No, you didn't. You didn't fall in love with him. You fell in love with Jesus. You just saw him. Talk to me, somebody. So you see the person, but it's not really the person. And that's the way it's going to be in the last day. They're going to think it's you, but it ain't going to be you. You would have entered into that rest. Even though you're walking, talking. You're doing everything that you used to do, but you're doing it in a different way. That the words that are coming out of your mouth now, amen, are not going to be your word because your word went out and came back far. But when your, the words come out of your mouth now, they're not going to come out of your mouth and come back far, but it's going to accomplish what not you sent it out, but what he sent out to do because now he have taken over the house. Are you listening to me? I, when tonight I talked about peeling off the old man. Amen. Come on, somebody. Peeling off the old man. That the new man can come forth. And I'm telling you, man, I, I promise you, I, I got to have this. Yes, I promise you, I got to. I got to. Uh, 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 uh. Get to the place that I can introduce what I have to the world. That when I speak the word of God, amen. If they're blind, their eyes come open. If they're deaf, their ears come open. If they're lame, they'll walk. If they're they're, they're dumb, they're, you know, they, they can't speak, they can talk. Whatever I speak, amen. That's what happened to Jesus. You can't show me in the scripture that one time that Jesus spoke a word over anybody and they stayed like it was. Come on. People knew the man had it like that until they just walk up by God and took the, just the clothing that he had and they were healed. The Bible said Peter was so caught up in God and so overtaken by the Spirit to. They couldn't even get to him. He just walked by. They got close and his shadow just overshadowed them. And they were made whole. They were mercy. It's just not in Jesus. It was in his clothes. Are oh, you listening to me? Yeah, you might try to slip on somebody's jacket. All of a sudden, I don't know. But the world just happened. You just, you just, the Holy Ghost, you just slipped into something. You, you, you just put on something. That's why people are trying to grab what you got. Because they know you got the anointing. So people that don't have God, they'll grab that, that power you got right there. And boy, they'll go there and they'll do that. They didn't want for them. They had that little towel with them, money they took over. They didn't want to go there and take that little that towel with them. Because they knew that Red Cross had that towel and it's anointed by the law. And guess what? They'll take that and they'll use it. And a lot of times, it works for them. It worked for me. So many times. I would take that prayer cloth and I would wrap that thing up. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't drive an automobile without a prayer cloth. Yeah. I kept one around it. I kept one around it. Every vehicle I would put, got in, I bought, I put a prayer uh, uh, hanging around it because I knew it was something about that. Mm -hmm. But you know, we don't have to taste nobody no more. Jesus, he, 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 he touched a few people, but the, most, the majority of the people that he, he healed, he just spoke a word into their life. Yeah. Be thou made whole. Take up thy bed. Receive thy sight. Come on, we know a few times he spit on the ground, made clay, and none of somebody lied to, to show him I could take the foolish thing to confine the wine. He, he, he did, they went on to the, then he told one man, go wash. The, the go wash, that's what. They never wanted a, a miracle. He wanted the man of God. He said, just go tell him, go wash and give yourself to him seven times. In, in, that, in, 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 in the jail. He said, now don't, don't go no other place but that. And he went. And when he dipped himself three, seven times, on the seven time coming up, mm -hmm. going down, coming up, he came up with baby skin. Yeah. God does things just like that. To the God, I'm telling you, this is the time and the hour that we can see God, amen, moving by his miraculous power. Now, I've been seeing miracles. God is giving miracles. God is giving miracles. We all are miracles tonight. 
But I'm talking about God, you could see some things that's going to be mind blowing. And if you don't get in that place of rest, then it's going to blow your mind. But how many know when we get in that place of rest, it's over with. We out of it. Yeah. Even though my girl, they go see them walking out, driving down the road in cars. All of a sudden, they go see the car, and they go see it no more the car. Then we riding in the car, go pick it up, sit it somewhere. And like, so I'm, well, you ain't got to ride in the car. I just take you. God going to move us from place to place just like he did, fellas. God is God. I love y'all tonight. I appreciate the Lord. I'm so excited about the word of God because I found out that everything going down and what I love so much about the word and I'm so excited about it because I know you fit to get your miracle. I know for a fact that God, I doubt in my mind, we are really good. The, the church is getting in a place, children of God, that we're going to walk out going to be going to be made completely whole. Um, you hear me? Because, amen, we all being fought with something right now. But I promise you, now, and a lot of y'all, amen, y'all walking with faith because, amen, you know that you're being hit, but you, you're walking and you're thinking, what the world just happened? But you're trying your best not to let nobody know that what's going on. But you know you got an apostle here. I didn't say, amen, God said, you got brother Wayne the apostle. Here, I can see, I, I don't say something, but I pray for you when I see you going through. I, I, you might not act like you're going through, you might not look like you're going through, but I know you're going through, and I promise you. I'm praying for you. I'm preaching before the Lord. And I know to the God. Without a doubt in my mind. You ain't going to stay like that. And why I get better with time? What about us? Come on somebody. I'm going to ache in my toe. Well tomorrow won't happen now. Bless God. My toe swole tomorrow. is going to be going down. Since then, why should it get bad and bad? The toe swole now next week. You got to take it to all. The devil's a lie. Hey, my mind's gonna get better. That's, a, that, 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 that's you know, that's kind of like, you know, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, I remember, uh, I used to do this. Everybody sat around the pool room, they talked about what they used to do. Hey, Amen. They played checkers and dumb and all. All they could talk about what they used to do. Bless God. Uh uh. I didn't used to do it. Joshua said, excuse me, Caleb said, hey amen. I'm 40, I'm 85 years old. 45 years ago, I was going in and out the wall. He said, it is now 45 years later. I still got the same step. He said, I still can do the same thing. Children, God, don't let the devil make you think you can't do it no more. You still can do it. But great. That he is in the world. Thank you, God. Pop my brothers up. You do to be moving around like he's about 50 years, 70 years old, man. Do you quit this stuff? Your brother died, let's go to speaking. I ain't picking up that. Man, you don't know how. I ain't going to. Quit chatting. Get back to him. I get it, baby. I reach out and grab it, pick it up. Well, what do you want to do? Man, don't let the devil make you think you can't do it no more. You can do it again. If you don't, you can't do it. Say you can do it. The Bible says, let the weak say. Let the sick say. Speak it out of your mouth. Don't, don't, if you don't do it, don't say you can't do it. Isn't that right? Don't say you can't do it. <laughs> when, they, when they say it, you can say, I'm getting on over. Uh, what you doing, man? The devil's a lie. Amen. Uh uh. Listen, I can handle that. Oh, Mike told me that I can't get this off. I said, let me tell you something. I get it off. He said, need a, uh 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 uh. uh. What you call a big wrench and you screw out like that? You got one of them tight wrenches. My new girl said, I don't need that. Got black down on my knees and with the screw and that baby was on that boy. I said, somebody put this on him real tight. They didn't put it on with no hand. They put it on that tight, but you know, I ain't gonna be defeated. Nah. I got down that boy and I just, it might turn it back, I took a hammer. <laughs> yeah. Screwed it off. He did my God, he don't know what I did. I hit that bad boy with a hammer. Come yeah. on off, man. You can't, y'all ain't gonna, I ain't gonna be defeated. No, son, no, by no means. I ain't gonna grab that it off, daddy, right there. I got not hit that thing and with the, with the chip in the, and screwed it back with that, 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 what you pull the nail with. Right. I hit it with that right there. 
Because it was complete. Let them get me wrong. God could have did it. Let me tell you something. We used to look for a miracle. But we got to look no more. We got the miracle. Remember when you sang that song? I'm looking for a miracle. I expect the impossible. I feel the intangible. I see the invisible. Don't you know that the sky, the sky is the limit to what I can have? And I'm sitting there trying to get that big old axe out. Looking at it, it got so hot since the jaws until it then wedged its way up in there. And I'm sitting on the ground, they, them girl back behind me singing, I'm looking for a miracle. And I'm down there and took the hammer and took everything and beat it that thing. And after I did all I could do with my with what I had, come on, and what I use yeah, yeah. is still in bud. But they got the saying, I expect the impossible. And as I was turning the thing loose, it jumped in my hand. I said, Look at God. God got in that thing and dropped that thing right in my hand. Is that, is that the truth? Good God of mine. I said, These are miracles that God gave us. The action jumped. I promise you, it jumped in my hand. God can do the He can do it, church. He can do it. Don't ever belittle your God. Is that anything too hard for God? Is that anything? I want what I'm saying to make you feel good. But I want it to do you some good. I don't want, I don't want it to just make you feel good. And boy, you go home. That's what we used to go to church. We used to go to church, but them they get to, oh, oh, you get the get the preacher so good, boy, that, and boy, and boy, you, everybody sitting out, going along with him, you know, making a sound with him. Walk out the door. Hey man, what a man that preacher, what did he preach on? Man, I tell you what he preached. Nobody can tell nobody what he preached. They just felt good. But when it's real good to you, and it's good for you, talk to me, somebody. It's gonna do you some good. You're gonna walk away with not just a good feeling, but you can walk away with a miracle. God is a miracle when you watch it. I know y'all today. I'm so thankful that I, I'm a part of the movie God Bible that never stopped me. I'm so thankful to God. I'm so thankful to God. I'm so glad today. God, I thank you, Lord, for letting me be a part of this ministry. I am. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. That God came and placed me in this ministry right here. The movie of God Bible that never stopped me. What we believe if we want Bible present, you must go the Bible way. That's it. You got right sister Denise. Amen. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Lord. Oh, boy. Oh, let's look the offering. Come on. Oh, so let's have a little brother laying up in here tonight. You know, went on to the third heaven tonight, huh? He said, he's gone now. And he made it. He made it to the house. That's, uh, Made it to the house. Look at it. Bless him, little heart. So good to see you, boy. Amen. So good to see you, boy. Amen. Hey, boy, you gone, boy, for real. Look at that, boy. You gone. Hey, man. So good to see you, man. Do you love me? So good to see you. Wipe your slump off your mouth, man. Love you, boy. Hey. Hey. It's uh, work real hard. Sit back down. Sit back down. Just sit back down. You good? Trying to, trying to get woke. Don't you fall, boy? Sit down, boy. Sit down. You sit down. Sit down. Sit down. You got them sit back. Just sit them down. You don't want them to fall. But let's pray for sister. But let's pray for uh, 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 sister Daphne and uh. uh Desmond and all the family. But Charlie, just keep them up, man. I tell you what, they, 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 they lost the joy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Watch them as he ministered the word of God. I appreciate
preached here Wednesday night, talked about it a little bit Wednesday night. And uh the Wednesday night. Thursday morning, I believe it was. You know? The Wednesday night. I believe it was. Wednesday. I met you when when y'all ate with me Thursday. So you love them? Yeah, they ate with me Thursday. Huh? Y'all did with Thursday? Uh, but y'all met with me after how did that happen? Uh, oh, we came to church that night. We came before we, we way before we came to church. Anyway, we was out there. I mean I was out, took myself out to get me a little something. And uh they called me and they was actually I said, Well, we in Talladega at the Stampede, you know, uh just trying to move around a little bit. And her brother Adrian came in, sat down in eight words. And uh, so the Lord was saying that, I was telling him that he'd been in my spirit, you know. He's been in my spirit. And she was saying that uh, he preached Tuesday night and that it wasn't him no more. They say he preached Tuesday night we know for a fact that he preached in that revival. Yeah. I told you this right now, I said, never in my life, ever. Well, you went on, you went on about it being that, 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 that night, that, that night, that that Thursday night. That Friday, that Friday night. Friday. Not that, no, he preached that Thursday night. Friday. 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 Okay, he Friday. preached that Friday night. Mm-hmm. And then but Steve preached that Saturday. Yes. But he preached so upon the anointing. And I talked about some man, I said, uh, well, God, God used you tonight. You know what I'm talking about? Because he had a problem with that Lord and Grace here once a long time ago. But now he got it, he got it together. And boy, he got to preaching that thing, boy, and his dad was sitting there pool, 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 pool. But then so your London brother Adrian told me, said Tuesday night he preached and he went down no more. They said he went down no more, brother. They said that man preached. And all I can think about was Demarcus. Yes. And Demarcus preached just Jesus. And he looked and said some things that I, I was wanting to tear him up when he yes, said some things. Yes, yes. Uh, he looked at his mama and like he wasn't talking about her like he chewing on his mama no more. Y'all know what he right. said. Oh, yes. But he was in his Holy Ghost. He was the spirit that took him over. And I was looking at him and I'm saying, that's your mama. You know, but he was. He didn't talk to her like he was in the moment, but he went out of order. But I'm saying that the words that he was using, he was using, and I found out later it was God. Yes. And that was the night he preached in. I know Stephen preached one night, and how it was, they all preached. But that's what God used that boy that night. Yes. And then that Sunday, he came out the service, because he, you know, he hadn't been coming. He came out the service. When I got down to the house, he walked up to me. He said, I tell you what I'm getting ready to do. He said, I'm going to get the youth. He said, that's what he said. He said, I ain't going to stop now. So I want you to know I'm back in. But he got back in with God. That's what he had got back in. And so the long story short, God got him down. Took him with him. God will get you to a place. God know your tomorrows. He know your next week. He know your next year. He knows, so God will get you to the place and take you with him. Talk to me, somebody. But now, God, I preach life. And God can get you to the place and take you over and use you. That's what that's what I was talking about a while ago. About being taken over. Being taken over by God. Either are you with the Lord. They ain't getting souls that they people think you get. Are you listening to me? Amen. I, 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 I see seen God move in so many different ways. But they, the hair was standing on my head, on my arm, when uh, Sister Yolanda was talking about it. And then Sister, Sister Laverne called me on the phone. She said, the man went down. I meant exactly what you said. And I was talking to Sister Daphne. She said, now Sister Laverne, I talked to her. She told me, she said, but it didn't, it didn't, I felt it. I heard her, but I didn't feel it. But now, since you said it, you know, it wasn't just because I said it, it was, it was, you know, sometimes you people 
So I thanked her. But then she said, she told me, she said, but it didn't click. Like she said, I felt it, but it didn't click until you told me. I said, I'll tell you one thing. I said, such a London brother Adrian told me, he said, he wasn't even there no more. So he preached in such a way to, you, 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 it just was mind blowing up there. Thank you, Jesus. And I just know that, you know, that's no more word for him. Are you listening to me? So what we got to do is pray for them. They need our prayers. And, and let's keep them up before the Lord because, you know, we all done traveled this road before. And it ain't a good feeling. I can listen to me, it ain't a good feeling. But, you know, this morning, about five or six o'clock, uh, between four and five, you know, he went to be with the Lord. Um, the whole day went by 24 hours, gone, so tomorrow gonna be, then one gonna be another 24 hours. Next day will be another 24 hours, that'll be 72 hours. You know, some fancy time don't keep rolling on. You listen to me. But we got to get ourselves together. Are you listening to me? We got to get ourselves together. And I'm not trying to be funny, but uh, what has I been listening to all day? Who have I been listening to all day? I didn't hear you. All day. All day. If I can listen to Lee William, <laughs> I can listen to you. I have been listening to them all day long. Y'all got it around me today. That's all you heard today. Was that poor boy showing up? He said, I won't give up. I can't give up now. Come too far. Huh? Been through, been through, been through too many hills, too, too many rills, and too many rocks. He said, but one day I'll make it to the top of the hill. That boy said, all I could do with this, I was just feeling it. Oh, wow. He was singing, and then he sung that song about uh, 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 let your power fall when your name is called. True, the doubt is gone. Boy, I've just been, I mean, I've been just, I've been blowing it up, been blowing it up. Amen. I said, Lord, amen. Somebody said, Well, why? Because I read my Bible, and when I read my Bible, Amen. Somebody else did that. Talk to me. That's somebody else's testimony. Is that right? Somebody else's testimony. We read about Moses. That was his. That was something he did. Come on. We read about Elijah. And Elisha. He, 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 we read about all the prophets of old. They don't know. Why not listen to beautiful songs and beautiful uh, messages that that all. Oh, Preachers and ministers and apostles and prophets, nothing here for us. So I've been into that thing. Not, I've been just listening to it all day long. Back and forth, back and forth. Never took it out all day. All day. Because sometimes I can reach back and grab some Let me grab our Bible. And some of us don't grab them no more. But we need to grab our Bible. Amen. And really get back in tune and get back in tune with God. But I promise you. It's a love in my heart for God's people. And I know by me loving the people of God the way I love, not just God's people here, but God's people as a whole. God, all the people that's in this world is God's people. And I got a love for every life. I don't care what they did, how bad they did it, how low they got. I'm going to love them. Don't tag a person because of their wrong. Amen. Love them out of it. Let them know that there's a way out. Don't care how bad it is. But you listen to me, we all have sinned in one way or the other. And God didn't kill us. God even had mercy on us. Talk to me. So let's have mercy on us. No different. No, man, you heard what he did? Don't even get with that. Amen. Let's pray for him. Let's pray for her, man. Let's, 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 let's go downgrade him. Let's don't put them down. Let's, let's lift them up. It might not be because God's going to take that unlovable. He's going to raise them up. Yeah. God's going to take the one that we felt like wasn't going to never ever be nothing. He's going to put something in them they're going to jump up and they're going to be used by God. Are you listening to me? 
But I love y'all with the love of you. Come on, man of God. Bring that baby in my home. We got Sister Hawkins in the house tonight. And I pray to you, baby. We want to thank God for that. We bless you tonight to have her here tonight. Oh, Lord, that mercy boy, it's been a long time. I said, well, I'm not going to be proud of you. Tell God to send that money to you when you get back in church. Because you got it, you definitely going to give it. Amen. So I ain't even worried about that. So we just got to pray God just, amen, just give you what you need that you get back in the house of God. But you won't be so sleepy. Amen. But me and God, I ain't talking about you. I'm about you, my people. I'm talking about I ain't beating you up tonight. You ain't got no rebuking yet. You ain't, be, you ain't got no rebuking yet. I, I do, you, 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 I'm just, I'm just talking tonight. I appreciate you, hey Amen. But if you ever get a rebuking, you feel it. You go home with it. You're aware a few days. Oh, you listen to me. <laughs> Oh boy, I saw. I saw something there, boy. I repeat, my Parker hard one time, and I hit him. Hit him so hard one time, and that's a miracle. No, it was what it was. I, 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 I cast the demon out of one person, and it jumped on my father. And my father went in so bad, and I said, don't, don't, don't take that home with you. Okay, all right. You see him trying to hold on to my pen. So he's a right to bid. Don't get the bid, I'm writing. Hey, but Brother Parker, that thing hit Brother Parker that night. And uh, so Doug was the reason why I jumped on him. Y'all remember that day? It's a Doug was the reason why I jumped on him. And I didn't say nothing. I just, I just left him alone. But Parker, I turned red as cold fire. My father went on home that night, boy. God, he went, they go about three days ago. You know, we we had service all the time with Brother Parker. He worked it so hard. So, boy, they, he came back in that next service. I turned around and said, It's been rough on you, son. <laughs> you had three days of uh, hell. I said, But God said, You ain't got to carry that spirit no more. Why, poor boy? My poor boy was so, he was so happy. Well, if that spirit came off Brother Parker, he lit up like a, you know, like right in these lights right now. I mean, God freed that man that yeah. night. I would never forget it. I would never when he jumped him. The girl was standing right by here. And he was standing over there. And she was trying to, the whole devil just using it that night. Not in a bad way. But I'm saying, you know, I had to rebuke my, my children, especially Sir Douglas. I had to, had to kind of warm up a lot. I had to, I had to tell Sir Douglas up. She was doing no Douglas at that time. She was gone. And she changed the name later on, but she was gone at that time. Boy, I tell you one thing, I had to light up. And boy, she went around. I remember, I can remember it. But anyway, that spirit jumped on Bro Parker that night. And boy, Bro Parker had that spirit, went home with it. And boy, he was going through. And that next service I took, I said, it's been three days of him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just, and all of a sudden, the ball can't catch it off of him. But I'm saying that, uh, Rebuke don't feel good, but it's for your good. Forth, the Bible says it brings forth, it, 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 it brings forth that peaceful fruit. You know what I'm talking about when rebuke comes, rebuke comes to set us in order. And I believe that's the reason why. Amen. I was raised the way I was raised because. My mother kept that, she kept that. She rebuked us and not only did she rebuke us, she put us behind and she let us know that we couldn't do certain things. And, and, and she instilled in us and the can tell you, y'all gonna love one another. You gonna love one another, y'all gonna fight that night, y'all ain't gonna fight each other. So we never did fight. We never fought with each other, never did. They, they popped me up like my head. You know, no more than us to do because I was messed. I kept him in trouble all the time. I told mama, mama. All I do is say, mama. Why I said that right now. <laughs> then when mama finally leave, cause they know she won't leave. Boy, they chop dance on my head. But I didn't care. The time mama got back home, they got it again. I 
what I'm afraid of, but I'm just saying, but as far as uh, us fighting one another, we didn't do that. We didn't do it. Mama put, taught us to love. So my Lord, that was, they were doing to me. And they were just mauling my head. Because they knew I just kept them in trouble. And Mama, I couldn't run, I couldn't do nothing. But one of them, Mama said, Y'all can go. They took off the running down the road. I took off behind them. And I couldn't keep up. I said, Mama! If y'all ain't gonna wait on him, you know he can't keep up. If y'all ain't gonna wait on him, come on back. Come on, man. What they gonna look like when pow pop me upside my head? <laughs> I, was, I stayed in the south, boy. I kept them jokers in trouble. I get to you, boy. They got some lights on them behind you. I know I put them back. I called them to get them. Because I was a mess, boy. You know, I don't know that the young the younger one kept them. You know, kept the others in trouble. Amen. That's what he do right there. <laughs> boy right there, you preach when you hear him. When you leave him, you turn into something else. Let's lift the offering. Appreciate the law for the word tonight. Amen. Come on. Hey, we thank God for the word from our woman of God. Thank God for the spirit of God. Thank God for our Facebook family. Thank you for joining us. You can be part of this portion of the service as well. You can give to Cash App. Dollar sign, brother life. I am. I am. The righteous of God. The righteous of God. I am a warrior. I'm a warrior. And not a warrior. Not a warrior. I am saved. I'm saved. And not lost. I'm not lost. I am victorious. I'm victorious. In every area, in every area of, my life. of my life. I am a worshiper. I'm a worshiper. And giving, and giving is a part of my worship. Part of my worship. I'm a soul. I'm a soul. A covenant part. A covenant part. A group of God. A group of God. By the way. By the way. Deliver tabernacle. Deliver tabernacle. Because of this. And because of this. I am the head. I am the head. And not the tail. And not the tail. I am above. I'm above. And above all. Above only. Sickness and disease. Sickness and disease. Cannot live. Cannot live in my body. In my body. All my needs, all my needs are, currently met. are currently met. No, no man. Oh, no man. Anything, anything but to love, but to love him. him. I command the fire of God to burn up everything, to burn up everything that's in the in, 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 in my life. In my life. The move of God. The move of God. By the way. By the way. The river is tabernacle. 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 And because I'm a giver, I'm a giver. In this ministry, in this ministry, I'm dead free as well. I'm dead free as well. We'll preach the word of God. We'll preach the word of God. In power. In power. And in demonstration. In order to reach the world. In order to reach the world. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. God be the glory. Let's give. Let's give.